Now the reason why I like brushes and why I think it's a great application for the classroom is primarily because of its simplicity. I'm going to go ahead and fire up brushes here. And when it opens, it opens up into the gallery. And I'm going to switch my view from horizontal to vertical here. Let me flip this over this way. And uh, on, in the gallery, what you're looking at is a bunch of uh, artwork that you've done in the past that you've painted previously. There's a series of buttons at the bottom there. And uh, you'll see that on the left there, there's this, uh, an area for the name of the picture. Uh, that first little uh, triangle there at the bottom, that's actually if you want to replay uh, all of your brush strokes. So if I click that, you'll notice this one starts, starts from a photograph, but then you can see how it gets created with each brush stroke. The one button next to it is if you're trying to uh, share that image with uh, other people. So you can add it to photos, you can copy the image, mail the image, send it to Flickr and so forth. You can delete the image with the trash can, you can look at all your images in kind of thumbnail view, and you can create a new image. And uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to hit the plus sign to create a new image. I've got a blank canvas and I'm going to go through and talk about all the uh, tools now on this particular display. Uh, this is pretty much it for brushes. Your tools are either in your header or your footer. And you'll notice there on the top left corner it says gallery and that just brings you back to the gallery where we were when we started brushes up. Over on the uh, far right side of the screen you'll see those two rectangles and those rectangles are for um, selecting a photograph or selecting a sketch that you want to start with. So if I select that it opens up the photo albums picker and I can go into my camera roll and I can select a particular image maybe that I want to start with. I'm going to cancel this for now and we'll go back to that in a second. Uh, right next to the uh, photo album image picker, you've got that gear icon. If I click the gear icon, it'll, it allows me to give this particular image a name and put my, uh, my name down there as the author. Down below that, you've got your layers. So uh, Brushes does have the ability to put layers, uh, use layers in a uh, drawing or in a painting. And uh, the way that works is essentially you can be, uh, uh, you can put the outline of whatever you're trying to draw on one layer and maybe you can actually do the fill or the brush strokes on a separate layer so that you don't mess up your, your outline. You're working on separate layers. And uh, you can move things around on the layers too. So if we go ahead and put a circle in here and go back to layers, you'll notice that um, right now uh, that particular circle is in the top most layer. I can flip that circle around and you can see it kind of moving around behind. It's just kind of moving directions on the uh, canvas right now. And I can also rearrange it so I can move that any place I want and I can also resize it. And when I have it how I want it I can click accept and it go ahead and makes that particular change permanent. Now next to um, those arrows on the far right, you'll see this uh, checkerboard. It looks like a little pencil eraser. That's for getting rid of layers. So if I go ahead and hit that, you'll notice that my circle goes away and I've removed my layer. If I want that circle to come back at the very bottom, we have the undo buttons that are in the bottom right corner, little curly, curly, cur curly arrows there, and that makes things go back. I can combine layers. That's what the arrow is here. If I combine er er uh, layers with the arrow down, icon. It essentially takes all my layers. I could have a half dozen different layers and it combines them down into one layer. I'll undo that. If I want to duplicate a layer, I can just use that little rectangle with a plus sign in it and that duplicates a layer. And if I want to delete uh, a layer, I can just hit the trash can. If I want to add a layer, I just hit the plus sign and that adds another layer to my uh, particular uh, document. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. We're going to move on now. So we've got the layers, we've got the undo buttons there. Uh, right in the center bottom of your screen you've got your brush controls. So you've got an eraser tool and then you've got a brush tool. They're kind of on either ends of this center icon that looks like a brush stroke. And if you click that icon you do get your options for your brush strokes. So you can select different types of brushes. You can change the spacing. You can change the size of your brush, and you can change the transparency of your brush. 
And then the two buttons down below, left and right, on the uh, brushes options are for controlling uh, the size. So if I move my finger now quickly on the screen, let me change colors here, you'll notice that if I start slow and move fast, the image gets a little, the, the line gets a little bit thinner. So it's controlled by the speed at which my finger moves across the screen. Same thing with uh, opacity. If I turn that on, then if I move really slow, you can see it's, it's uh, pretty transparent. If I move faster, it changes how the opacity works. And then finally, the last three tools on the far left bottom, you've got the uh, paint can, which just takes whatever color you're using and dumps that into the uh, canvas. And then you've got an eyedropper tool, which we'll talk a little bit more when we start actually working on a painting here. But this actually just picks up the color of whatever you uh, touch. And then finally, I've got my color palette right here. And this allows me to select different colors and then actually move those colors if I chose to into my uh, palette here. So I can organize colors if I'm working on a particular theme and I've got a series of colors that I want all, all to be the same. So next I'm going to demonstrate how you can actually go ahead and uh, create a, a, a piece, a, a picture from a photograph. And what's nice about this is, especially in a classroom situation, we're not messing with a bunch of colors. It does take some of the fun out. You're not making a big mess and getting paint all over your fingers here. Uh, but that actually enables teachers to do this pretty quickly in the classroom. So the way this works is, we're going to go ahead and create a new canvas. And then I'm going to import an image from my camera roll, camera roll again. I'm going to import that still life that I'm working with. And let's say, for example, you're teaching your concept of composition or of line or color or whatever it might be. You can actually take and shoot an image with your iPad, save that into your album, and then use that to begin a uh, painting. So here I'm just pinching with my fingers to realign, resize this rotate and when I've got an image maybe we're talking about the rule of thirds here and I want to throw this into a particular area that makes it a little bit more interesting and has some nice line uh, line work going on in there what I can do now is essentially accept this and then I can begin painting right on top of this particular photograph and the way this works is we'll let's control the size of the brush a bit is I mentioned the eyedropper tool over here on the left and I said that you can pretty much move it anywhere you want right and it'll pick up a color so if I want this kind of blue color here I can pick that color up and then I can begin painting immediately right on the surface of uh, my canvas but the thing about the eye brush or the uh, eyedropper which is nice is if you just touch and hold your finger down on the screen it will pop up and it'll allow you to select an image so maybe I've got this real bright highlight that I want to pick up that particular color for in my work. I can do that and I can go through and relatively quickly begin painting. I'm going to change the opacity here to very 100% opa opacity, change the brush size, make it a little bigger. So now I can go through and actually be begin painting this whole thing pretty quick. And I've got those the velocity of my finger controlling the opacity and the width of my brush stroke right now, which is not a bad thing. And I can move, move my campus, canvas around just by pinching and dragging my finger across the screen. You can see this goes relatively quick. So in a, in a matter of minutes, Kids can create a composition, crop, and lay out the image how they want, and immediately go to work painting on top of their image. The other thing I like about brushes is it really brings the concept of uh, proportions and composition across to students when they start working in it. And ultimately, you end up with an image. I double-click to get that to resize to fill the canvas again. 
ultimately you end up with an image that looks pretty much like a painting even though you started with a picture and you can get concepts across like rule of thirds, composition, color, proportions, shape, all those things can be pretty much uh, uh, taught using brushes in a relatively quick amount of time, short amount of time, uh, and also uh, if you've got the number of devices, kids can actually get their hands in, in there and start working without making a huge mess.